fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Come on, big fella. I am silver. Power! It was snowing in the high border country. Snow was everywhere. It fell in soft, swirling plumes of crystal that covered everything with white. The chill of it seemed to partially penetrate a warm room and shadowed the face of a kindly old woman whose only illness was age. Yet despite the snow and the chill of the storm, the woman's voice was clear as she questioned the doctor who stood beside her. Well, Dr. Sawyer? Uh, Heart action slow. Respiration normal for a woman of your age. That all? Well, I'm sure with a little rest and perhaps a tonic you'll be all right. Fiddlesticks, all I want is rest. A long, peaceful rest. I know about my heart. I see. How about the boy, Dan? You're his only relative, aren't you? Mm, That's why I wanted to know how much time I have. Where's Dan now? He was waiting in the other room when I came in. On your way out, tell him to come here, will you? On my way out? Why, I haven't prescribed anything. The only prescription I need, doctor, is the one I'm asking for. Send Dan in. Just as you say. How's Gran feeling, Doctor? She wants to see you, Dan. You mean I can go go on in? She asked me to tell you. I'll wait here. Gran. Come here, Dan. Sit down by my bed. Doc Sawyer says you want to see me. Yes, Dan. I'm going on a journey. A a journey? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going alone, Dan. You'll stay here. Oh, Cran. Okay, may I go? Well, this is one trip I'll have to make alone. What do you mean? I'll explain it later, son. Right now, I want you to do something for me. Of course, Cran. Who is your best friend? My best... Why, you are. No, no, I, I mean besides me. To whom do you feel closer than anyone else? I, I guess... It... If you rule yourself out, there, well, there's only one other person. Who is it, son? The Lone Ranger. It was Mr. Martin before the Lone Ranger came here. Yes, I thought so. And it makes me very happy. You think a great deal of the Lone Ranger, don't you? Well, when I grow up, 
I want to be just like him. Well, you couldn't choose a better model, son. And now, even though it's snowing outside, I'm sure you won't object to running a little errand for me. Oh, sure, Grant. I want to talk to the Lone Ranger. Can you find him for me? Find him? Sure I can. Where is he? Oh, I don't know, but he'll answer my signal. He always does. Or shall I go right now? Please. Well, are you sure you'll be all right? I don't know how long it'll take. I have to go up on top of the uh, hill and... Don't worry, Dan. I'll be waiting. Well, I'll hurry as fast as I can. Kiss me, Danny. Sure. Ah, that's a good boy. I'll be back. And I'll bring the Lone Ranger with me. Be sure and wear your heavy coat, son. Oh, maybe I ought to stop at Mr. Martin's. He and Betty could come over and sit with you till I get back. Well, if it isn't too much trouble. Oh, I'll bet they'd be glad to come over. Goodbye, Gran. Goodbye, son, and hurry back. <laughs> Dan guided his horse up a narrow trail until he reached the highest point of a mountain overlooking the valley. Then he dismounted and quickly gathered an armload of dry twigs from under high fir and spruce trees that gave protection from the snow. A few moments later, he had them arranged in three separate piles. When he applied a match, flames leaped upward like three bright plumes against the blackness of the night. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto had followed the trail of a killer from the southwest. Crossing many states, they finally brought the outlaw to justice just south of the Canadian border. Here in the snow-covered, rugged mountains of the Copper Country, they had met Dan, a 14-year-old boy. There was a strange, unexplainable interest in the boy. His qualities seemed to be so like those of the Lone Ranger that Tonto was amazed. The Lone Ranger himself was surprised at Dan's knowledge of the woods and mountains his understanding of the Indians and his resourcefulness and courage. When the masked man saw three signal fires high on the mountaintop, he knew it was Dan who wanted help. Hold on, Silver! Get up, scout! Tonto rode just behind the Lone Ranger from the hidden camp to the hilltop where Dan waited. Oh, I knew you'd come. Easy, big fella. Now, what's wrong, Dan? Well, Gran wants to see you. She asked me to find you. Well, how's your grandmother feeling? She's been ill, hasn't she? Uh, I'm kind of worried. Did you send for a doctor? Oh, sure. Doc Sawyer's there now. He stayed around. Grant talked sort of funny. Said something about going on a trip alone. Not taking me with her. Well, then she asked me to bring you. Oh, I, I see. I've been thinking about it and wondering. Grant's pretty old. Maybe she... Well, maybe she thinks she's going to... Do you think there's any chance of... I mean, do you think she might die? Dan, people who live long and useful lives never really die. Gee, I... The goodness they've given to the world lives after them, in the hearts and minds of everyone they've known. Your grandmother's one of those kind of people. She will someday leave here, but she won't die. Yeah. Gran is like that. I see what you mean. Let's go to the house. Oh, 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 oh. Here we are. Uh -huh. Other people here, too. <sighs> That's Mr. Martin's cutter. He's here with his daughter. You know what I said about, about good deeds living forever in the hearts and minds of everybody? Yes. If, if everybody just figured that way, there'd be a lot less trouble in the world. Why, yes, Dan. What made you say that? I don't know. It just seems like ordinary good sense. Truth is always that way, Dan. Just ordinary good sense. Let's go in. Grand's in the front room. Come on. Dan! What? What a lone ranger. Come on in. You're, you're back sooner than I expected. We made it as soon as we could, Gran. Good evening. Good evening. I suppose you were wondering why I sent for you. I'm proud that you did. Well, um, 
Betty, Betty, look in that chest over there and bring me the small cardboard box that's in the top drawer. Of course. Is this it? Uh, thank you, child. These are very dear keepsakes of mine. I've, I've never showed them to anyone before. See? Why, they're baby clothes. Yes. What an adorable little dress. Yes. Just like the tyke who used to wear it. Are those keepsakes part of the story? Mm, they're the beginning. What do you mean, Gran? It was almost 14 years ago, but I can remember everything as though it had happened yesterday. Tell us about it. Well, Jim, that was my husband, had been anxious to come out west for years. He read all the reports of the Lewis and Clark expedition, and finally we decided to make the move. We traveled together as far as Council Bluffs. I waited there while he came on ahead. A few months later, he sent for me. He'd found this valley and decided it'd be our home. Well, naturally, I joined the next wagon train that was headed west. I'll never forget that trip. We left Council Bluffs at midnight for what was to be the greatest adventure of my life. Young man. Uh, yes, sir. Can you tell me where I'm supposed to ride? My baggage is in one of the freight wagons, but I can't find a seat for myself. Well, if you're not too particular, ma'am, you can ride in my wagon right here. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. Now, if I Here, can... here. Let me help oh, you up. Uh, I... uh, uh, uh. Thanks. I've only got one other passenger. She's in the back of the wagon there someplace. Oh. You two ladies will be riding together for quite a spell, so you'd better introduce yourself. <laughs> right. I'll be right back. I guess I'm the other passenger he's talking about. Well, I'm very grateful. We have a long trip ahead of us, and with three people here in the wagon, Oh, we there can... really are four. I have a son. Son? Oh, excuse me, I didn't notice any boys scampering around oh, here. Oh, he, he's hardly old enough to scamper. He's asleep in that basket. Do you want to see him? Of course. It's rather chilly tonight, so he's well covered, but... Now, there. <gasps> What a lovely baby. How old is he? Six months. Almost seven. Isn't this a rather difficult trip for For a baby so young. He doesn't mind it. He thrives on traveling just like his baby. <laughs> is your husband with you? No, he's going to meet us at Fort Laramie. You see, he's a Texas Ranger, and our home is really down south, but... Uh -huh. oh. oh, excuse me for being so rude. My name is Mrs. Reed. Linda Reed. And this is Daniel. He doesn't acknowledge introductions very well when he's asleep. <laughs> I'll excuse him. I'm sure the young man and I will become better acquainted before the trip is over. I didn't know then how tragically those words would come true. The wagon train left Council Bluffs that night, and we traveled for days through the desert and wild country. Linda and I became fast friends during that time. And the baby, little Dan, liked me too. Well, nothing of importance happened until the night before we were scheduled to arrive at Fort Laramie. Then, just after we'd made camp with all the wagons drawn up in a big circle, one of the trail scouts rode back with news that terrified all of us. <laughs> What is it? What's wrong? You and Mrs. Reed better hug the bottom of the wagon, ma'am. Is there going to be trouble? Plenty. A parcel of Cheyenne engines are headed this way. Indians. Ah, don't worry, Linda. There are plenty of men and rifles with this train. Get Dan and stay back here under cover. Oh, I will, but what Well, I'll doing? help the other women reloading the rifles. Here they come! Millions of them! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The eyes of everyone in the room, Dan, the Lone Ranger, Dr. Sawyer, Mr. Martin, and Betty, were on Dan's grandmother as she continued her story. As long as I live, I'll never forget that awful night. Hundreds of yelling savages riding round and round our wagon camp in a circle that grew steadily smaller. They were using guns, spears, and flaming arrows. Within a few moments, several of the wagons were afire, and some of our men had been killed. I was busy keeping rifles loaded for our wagon driver. Got that other one ready, ma'am? Yes. It's still hot, but I think you can oh, use I'm it. I'm sure there must be something I can do. Please let me help. Get down. Don't stand up like that. Stay below the edge of the wagon, Mrs. Reed. You're a perfect target. Oh. Oh. Go to her, ma'am. I'll stay here and sling the lead, just as long as there's any left. Mrs. Reed. Linda. Why, you... How is she, ma'am? If the object of this raid is to kill a young mother... The Indians are successful. Them dirty, sneaking Cheyennes. I'd like to... But a young one, Mrs. Reed's boy, what'll become of him? I'll take care of him until we get to Fort Laramie and meet his father. You'll trust me, won't you, Dan? As it turned out, the little fella didn't have much choice. He had to trust me. You say his name was Reed? The Indian raid, what happened? It was almost a massacre, but not quite. There were enough of us left alive to care for the dead and wounded. We reached Fort Laramie two days later. And, and Mrs. Reed? She's buried there on the prairie. Was the baby's father waiting in Fort Laramie? No, he wasn't. The only thing waiting for the boy and me was more grief. Two death messages. Two? Jim, my husband, had been killed in a blasting accident. Clearing the ground for this very house we're in right now. The other message was addressed to Mrs. Reed. I opened it. It was from a commanding officer of the Texas Rangers down south someplace. The Rangers? Yes. The boy's father was dead. Killed in ambush while on duty. But this baby... You call him Dan. Could, could he be any relation to me? Dan, you were that baby. Gosh. Dan's father... You said he was killed while on duty with the Texas Rangers. Yes. Do you know any more about it? Any other details? Well, Hargraves, the commanding officer, wrote me a letter explaining everything in detail. It seems that he called on six of his best men, had them come together fully armed. Boys, I've got to send you on a job I wouldn't turn over to my worst enemy. Where are we going? What's the assignment and how far, sir? It's a place called Bryant's Gap. Just beyond is the basin where old Bryant lives. Oh, I've heard of the place. Reed, I don't like to send you men on this job. Those outlaws aren't the hiding sort. They're more likely to be waiting with guns. Well, isn't it possible that we can slip into the basin without their knowing it? It's possible, but not probable. They know about everything that goes on. There are a dozen places in the gap before you reach the basin where they could ambush you. Well, if there are no instructions, sir, we'll start. Oh, one thing. Reed, aren't you expecting your wife and son from the east? Yes, sir. Then I'll send someone else in your place. No, thanks, sir. This is my job. I'll go with the others. But if you don't... My brother's going along, too. One of us will come through. Perhaps you'd better stay With back. a good fight in the offing, not on your tin type. Let's travel. Right. Get up there. Come on. Come on. Get up there. Come on. Come on. Mr. Hargrave said that was the last time he saw his men alive. The next thing he knew, they'd been waylaid and killed. And by the time he got to the gap, there were six graves with the saddles and hats of the Texas Rangers to mark them. Our graves. What about him? I, I knew him. Somehow, I don't know why, I felt that fighting men like Dan's father and the brother must have pulled out of there somehow. Remember, they, they weren't actually seen dead. All the officer knew was that he saw their graves. What's the matter with the Lone Ranger? I, I don't know, Dad. Look at his hand. It... It's actually trembling. What's the matter? Dan, Mr. Martin, Betty, all of you. I would like to have a few minutes alone with Mrs. Frisbee. How's that? Oh, come, Father. We'll go into the other room. Is there something wrong? Please. Very well. Come, Dan. Mrs. Frisbee, let me tell you a little more of the story. More of that massacre. You know? Yes, yes, I know about it. Those six Texas Rangers were riding through Brian's Gap. 
They knew that the high rocks on both sides gave plenty of hiding places for anyone who wanted to waylay them. There was nothing that could be done about it. Suddenly, without warning, the shooting started. Two of the men fell from the saddle without a chance to use their guns. Two others were wounded but returned the fire. Dan's father was hit four times. But still he fought. He was the bravest of all. Six times Dan's father was hit before he finally was beaten. The other rangers fought their best, but they had no chance. They were in the open, and their enemies were shielded by rocks. So the fight was over in a few minutes. But one of those men did live. What? He recovered consciousness to find his friends all dead. He was so weak he couldn't stand. He crawled along the canyon floor, wondering each moment why the outlaws didn't shoot again. He didn't know that he'd been unconscious for hours. He finally found a small stream of water and followed this to a cave. But in the cave, the Texas Ranger lost consciousness again. He didn't recover for a long time. When finally he opened his eyes, he saw an Indian standing near him. He found that his wounds had been dressed. But hot broth was ready for him to eat. The Indian said, Me, Tonto. Tonto. Other ranger, all gone. All dead? Ah, uh, me bury him. He make six grave. Outlaw think all ranger dead. You dead with others. Oh, but why did you... Why did you do that? You wear mask. Outlaw not know you still alive. You only won to get revenge. The only survivor. Ah, uh, you lone survivor. The Lone Ranger. Then you were there. You were one of the Texas Rangers. Yes. You were the one who got every one of those outlaws. Then you had to carry on your work. You were officially dead. Yes. Tell me. Tell me what I want to know. Dan's father was my older brother. Then you... I am Dan's uncle. You see, my brother was several years older than I. I'd always admired him. From the time we were little fellows, we fought each other's fights. And he taught me to ride my first horse. He used to hold me on his knee like our father had held him and tell me stories of adventure. I would have given my life for him. When he came west and joined the Texas Rangers, I too joined as soon as I could. After my brother was killed, I heard about the death of his wife. Now I know why an all-wise providence allowed me to live this long. Well, for years I've wondered about the boy. I never could find out whether he was alive or dead. I didn't know where to search for him. I, I only hope that I can be to Dan what my brother was to me. I promise you I'll always take care of him. I, I want to think of him as if he were my own son. I have something here. I was going to hand it to you anyway. This little gold locket. Dan's mother wore it. Oh, wait. I, I want to take off my mask. Well, my eyes, they're not as good as they used to be. The candle, will you bring it over so I can see? Of course. That's it. Hold it close. And kneel down here by the bed. All right. Yes. It is true. The same clear eyes. Forehead. Everything. Oh, you and my Danny boy. Put the mask on again, Lone Ranger. The West needs you. Before the Lone Ranger replaced his mask, he bent low and touched his lips to the wrinkled cheek of the fine old lady who was so very, very tired. He heard her breathe softly. Ride on, Lone Ranger. Ride on forever with Danny at your side. And then he rose and saw that rest had erased the wrinkles that a great peace had descended on a brave soul. Though there was no wind, and the 
candle flame went out. And in the darkness, the Lone Ranger replaced his mask. He turned to the bed. May the rest you so richly deserve be yours forever. She's sleeping, Dan. Sleeping? Oh, yes. Will you go in, Doctor? Of course. Dan, come outside with me. Yes, sir. She wouldn't want you to cry. I like crying. Dan, stand here in the light of the window. I want to show you something. Yes, sir. There's a locket she gave me. Oh. Here's a picture of you as a baby with your mother and father. That's my father? On this side of the locket, there's another picture. He... He looks something like my dad. Dan, that's a picture of me. Of... Uh, of you? Your father was my older brother. Uh, then you... You must be my... Oh, boy. Dan, the years I've spent looking for you, wondering if you were alive. Lone Ranger, my uncle. There's just the two of us, Dan, to carry on. I never knew my dad, but you'll take his place now. You bet I will, son. Well, the Lone Ranger has found Dan, and new thrills and adventures lie ahead when the boy falls in step while the Lone Ranger rides. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>